time to talk leads, time to talk business. Welcome, it's Coach Borino with you on every Tuesday we get together, we talk about how to get more business, how to help more people, how to be cool, how to don't lose your sanity, right? In this crazy business, how to have a good time. Here we are, the year is almost over. We have what, I wrote it down, 27 days left. So that's 648 hours left of this year. So here's my question for you. What would you have done differently knowing what you know today? If you had a magic machine, a button, let me demonstrate, <laughs> that would transport you back to January of this year, and you had a chance to do it again, what would you do differently? Knowing what you know now, what message would you send back in time, a year back, and say, dude, Whatever you do, don't do this. That's a bad idea. Or, please do that. What would it be? Share with me some ideas. I'm just curious. What would you tell yourself from today if you had the magic machine saying, here's a message, and you send it back a year? What would you say? Stop chasing shiny. Well, hold on. Let's do this. Rob says, stop chasing shiny things and focus. Excellent. Focus, yes. Karen, pretty simple. Just calling. Do more calling, yes. What else? What would you tell yourself? Ricky L says, thank you for the panel. You're welcome. I'm really excited about having these lovely people on, so it's going to be good. Denise says, more follow-up. Very good, yeah, follow-up, Jesus. How many of you drop business? lose leads, lose opportunities for listings and sales just because your follow-up sucks. Don't let off the gas when things are good. Ashley says, brilliant. Don't let off the gas. What's the first thing you drop when things get busy? When you start picking up listings, you have a couple things on the contract, you're about to get closed. What's the first thing that goes other than exercise? That was my advice. What is it for you? Lead generation, right? And then you have the yo-yo. That's brilliant. Excellent insights. What else? Grace should have taken massive action instead of putzing around. Yeah, the need for perfection. Isn't that crazy, Grace? How we just so desperately try to avoid the push, the shove, the discomfort. I read a good book by my man David Serpa, Keller Williams Agents down in Temecula, California. A really good guy. Very inspirational book called The Machine's Gunner Guide to Real Estate. And if you can go through some of the ideas that he shares that are not directly related to real estate, among them being an ex-Marine sharing his, his experiences. There's a lot of gold, real estate gold. And one of the takeaways I had from the book is that your income is directly related to your willingness to have uncomfortable conversations, awkward conversations. Your desire for perfection, your need to get that resume just right, to make the perfect logo. It drives me crazy when I see this long thread when somebody posts, hey guys, I'm working on my logo, what do you think? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Do you ever think that there's a seller out there who says, well, Martha, what do you think? I like this guy, Jim. He's a good agent, sold some properties in our neighborhood, like him, trust him, know what he's talking about. But look at Maria's logo. My God, that's the agent we're going to go with. <laughs> Never happened. It is the procrastination, it's the avoidance. What else? What would you tell yourself if you could send your message back? Be dedicated, not deep. Excellent. When things get busy, the first thing that goes for me is follow-up. Yes, for you and many others. Totally true. Whoops. What did I do? Sorry. Made the wrong turn. Here I go. Be dedicated. When things get busy, the follow-up is the first one to go. Yes. Prospecting and follow-up. So now, we can't go back. But here's the thing. What can you tell yourself now? Because a lot of this is applicable now. So the 2019, the next year, is absolutely phenomenal for you. And I assure you, if you don't make some changes, it's going to be the same or worse. Because as you've noticed, things are changing a little bit, right? Interest rates creeping up, government is indicating things are not as kumbaya, market is slowing down, listings are not selling as fast, no more multiple offers, you gotta watch it, price reductions showing up, right? 
things are changing. So what can you tell yourself? What can you implement now so that not only will you survive, forget that, but have an amazing year? The most profitable you ever had, the most enjoyable you ever had. Will there ever be stress? Of course there will be stress, there will be tension, there will be difficult clients, there will be deals that fall apart, there will be incompetent agents you have to deal with, lenders who don't follow through and all that stuff, a million other issues that you have to deal with. But what can you do differently? So I was thinking about it and there are a couple of things that I will suggest. And these are also reasons why I see people flop. Either struggle or worse, they leave the industry. And it starts with first, a desire. And as you'll see on the panel next week, these ladies are from all walks of life, different age, different background, different market, different time in the business, different ways of generating business. But you'll see that every rock star I've ever trained, and I had the privilege to train 27,000 of you over the years. I've been at this for a long time, for over 20 years. This is one thing that all have in common. They want it so bad. I remember when I was fucking sleeping in the car, being homeless. I was still dreaming about driving a Mercedes, living in a beautiful home, wearing nice clothes, vacations, plenty of money, being a good agent, being a well-paid agent. That desire didn't leave just because I was broke. It starts with this. Now, the reason this desire is such an important foundation is because it acts like a fuel. It is the fuel that you charge up the tank and then the rocket ship starts to move. So if you're stuck, if you feel, if you're worried about 2019 or if 2018 wasn't all that great, where on a scale of 1 to 10 was your desire? Here's what I mean. If, let's just say you wanted to have a nice watch. If not having that watch is ceased to be an option, if not sending your kids to a really good school ceased not to be an option, if that vacation with your spouse to Bahamas not going is not an option if the desire is at 10. You have enough fuel. Without the fuel, you're stuck. You're dead in the water. It's like engine needs fuel. You need fuel. Your business, your drive, your discipline, your passion, your optimism, your willingness to persevere. Robert Kiyosaki said the best. He says the level of your success will depend on your ability to deal with disappointment. A strong desire where you burn the boats, no going back, will give you enough fuel to get you there. Because from there, you're not going to ask, will I get there? Will 2019 be an awesome year? The only question the desire will make you ask is how? How? How will I get there? What will it take? How? So that's the foundation, desire. The second one is the right mindset. How positive are you? What kind of energy do you carry around? Do you expect good things to happen? Do you focus on the good stuff? Do you talk about the good stuff? Debbie Downers don't stand a chance. What you think about, you attract. What you feed energy with your attention, you're asking more of. Mindset, huge. Rock stars, at 10. Optimistic, passionate. Now, that doesn't mean you always jump around and you're always excited. Yes, shit hits the fan and you're going to have bad days. You're going to have a bad streak. You're going to have things going sideways on you. That is not the point. It's not about avoiding it. It is what you do right after somebody cancels an appointment on you. Somebody's nasty to you on the phone. Somebody calls you that the deal is off. Buyers change their mind. Sellers go with another agent. It's what you do right after how you react to it and the action you take right after will determine how far you're going to go in 2019. Look back and be honest with yourself. How do you deal with setbacks and disappointments? How quickly can you get up after you get punched in the face and God knows it hurts? When you get that dreaded call from a seller, we like to, but the other agent will do it for less. You're like, fuck, I quit. We've been there, we've all been there, I know what it's like. Where you thought it was a done deal. I had sellers like that. Marino, we love you. There's nobody else we have in mind, we're going with you. Let's get it signed tomorrow. And then I get the phone call. What you do right after, how you get back up, and you go, that hurt. Whew. The 
bust off. Let's go. Next. That's the mindset you need. Next, your level of confidence. Where is your confidence? How much do you trust yourself? How much do you like yourself as an agent? How much do you think you deliver as an expert? How confident are you? Because my friends, I have news for you. If you're not at 10, how in the world do you expect to sell and go, oh my God, where do we sign? We want to give you $10,000 for your service. We know you're 100% sure. We know eh, you kind of doubt yourself. We know that you feel like there might be better agents out there, but still we're going to go with you. That's never going to happen. What's your confidence level? And yes, if you have to fake it at the beginning, cool. But ask yourself this, if I'm not 100% sure, if I'm not at 10, if this is not at 10, why? Why? Why are you not at 10? What's causing you to feel less than 10? See, let me put it this way. There are many other real estate coaches out there. There's nobody like me. And you probably go, well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> I believe I'm the best real estate coach there is. There are others, they teach you different things. But I mean, think about it. What if Coach Barino comes here and says, well, I hope this stuff kind of works for you and you get a here, little deal here and a little money there. I wish you uh, good luck. You're like, fuck that. I am 100% certain that if you stick with me, if you do the path with me, or if you get the Xpark Plus or the Fizzbo, you know, if you work with me, if you give me a chance to inspire you, to guide you, to teach you, and to slap you around, we're going to do some stuff and you're going to get some results. And that's what you want from me, is the sense of certainty. That's what your clients want as well. Where are you? Where are you? And if it's not 10, fix it. If you don't know the market well enough, fix it. If you don't know how to get shit sold, fix it. If you don't have a 10, 10 point listing presentation, that's not a 10, fix it. If your follow up needs repair, if you don't know how to communicate, fix it. All of that is fixable because it's teachable. That's what I do, that's what I'm good at. And there's the last one, systems. You will get by without systems to do eh, 10, 15 deals a year. It's possible. You just kind of wing it, shoot off the hip, not much planning, not much preparation, not a sequence. Just kind of, let's see how it goes. Ooh, let's do an open house. Ooh, let's call a few experts. Ooh, let's do this, let's do that. Oh, my cousin wants to buy a house. Let's see if I can sell him something. Hop, 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 hop. But it's gotta be a 10 to really start cranking it out on a predictable basis so that you still have some kind of a balance between health, family, life, and a profitable business. You gotta have a system. It doesn't need to be complicated. My system's not that complicated. There's a certain sequence of steps you execute. How do you get the leads? How do you build, build trust and connection with them? How do you follow up with them? How do you convert them into appointment listings? That's about it. And they're all similar. They use different tools and different strategies and different techniques. You can't approach FISBOL the same way your project's fired. You can't generate referrals the same way you generate open house leads. But the similarities are there because you still have to develop connection and trust and rapport with them. And I'm good at that. Just like us here talking, right? We're having a good time. So these are the four elements. If you don't rate 10, and then what it, what it ends up, all of this will feed into the last part. You know what that is? Massive action. But you need to have these in place first. You need to have a strong desire. Without strong desire, you ain't going to take solid, predictable, repeatable action. Without the right mindset, you're going to go, well, fuck it, it's not working. Market is bad. This is bad. That is bad. Without the confidence, you're not going to convince people. Now, I don't mean to convince them in a manipulative way. But if they don't feel like you really can be trusted, you're passionate, you're good, you're competent, it's over, Johnny. And without systems, how are you going to get there? Especially if your goal is not to make 50, 60,000. Fuck that. You can do that. You can do it with your house closed. Shit, with $10,000 average commission, six deals, my son can do that and he's 14. But if you want to shoot higher, 200, 300, 400, 500,000 or more, you need these things. So take a few minutes when we're done and say, okay, honestly, where's my desire and how do I fix it? Want more stuff. Now by stuff, I mean if you want to live in a beautiful house, awesome, thumbs up. Nobody judges you worse than you judge yourself. You are your worst judge. True or false? You tell yourself shit that if somebody else told you that shit in your face, you would smack him crazy. Don't judge. 
You want what you want, whatever floats your boat, whatever inspires you, whatever is exciting to you. Bahamas, great school for your kid, nice clothes, bank full of cash, money, all the bills paid, credit cards, zero balance, whatever it is. It's all good. It's all good. There is no wrong answer. The way you measure it, well, how much does it make my heart skip? Mindset. Read some good books. Do the path with me. First month, we're going to fix your head. I wrote a book about it. Next, confidence. Where am I screwing up? Maybe you need some role plays. Maybe you need a little guidance. Maybe you need a little coaching. Maybe you need to study the market better. Maybe you need to work on your presentation. Maybe you need to work on your scripts, whatever that is. There's always an element you can identify and pinpoint and fix it. Systems. How good are your systems? You know, the easiest way to measure systems, the easier way to evaluate them, how many dollars did they bring you? If you answer, well, not that many. Dude, if these three things are in place, got to fix those systems. I can help you. I have systems to get expired. I have systems to get FISBOs. I have systems to get referrals. I have systems to do a good open house. I have systems to do a good listing presentation. All this is a system. I had to break it down into these simple digestible steps so you can learn them. And then how consistent are you with action? And is the action congruent with your goals? Are they aligned? And if they're not, up your goals, up the action. Let's go. Because here's the thing. Next year is going to be challenging no matter what. Whether you have some shitty 9 to 5 job in some meaningless cubicle doing some bullshit work for some idiot boss for a paycheck and you're willing to waste 5 of the 7 days you have, that's tough. We have no freedom. You have no freedom to decide how much money you're going to make. You have no freedom to, to shape your future. That's going to suck. That's tough. Being a productive, successful real estate agent, whether you're part of the team, whether you have assistants, or you're running a solo operation, is tough. Having any kind of business is tough. Running my business is tough. Now, I'm not a huge company. We have a handful of people working for us. It's not a huge enterprise, but there are times where it's tough. There are times where I'm burned out. There are times where I'm tired. I'm frustrated. There are times where things don't go well. But there's always a price. There's always a price you're going to pay no matter what, whether you're part-time or full-time, whether you've been added six months or six years or 16. There will always be a price you're going to pay. Are you willing to pay it? You have to have awkward conversations. You have to step out of your comfort zone. That's the price you need to pay in order for you to succeed big time. You need to build systems. You need to work on your confidence. You need to work on your mindset constantly. Mindset is not something you have to be done. I arrived. Tony Robbins blessed me because I have arrived. My mindset has been fixed. It will never be done. It's like a muscle. Mama and George, I have a personal trainer three times a week. We work our asses off. I will work with George or another trainer for the rest of my life. I, just like you, need a coach. I have a business coach. My man Frank, I paid him $9,000 last month for coaching. Just like you, I need to grow. I need to improve. This process will never stop. But here's the best part. Once you got the desire in place, you have the right mindset, you work on your confidence, the systems are clicking in, and you're taking action. That's where the fun begins. Because then you can look back. And what I want to have is a conversation with you next year, right here, because I'm not going anywhere. Rockstars will be here, you will be here, I'll be here. But what I want from you is to come back next year. Look back at 2019 and say, motherfucker, remember that talk, that serious shake-up talk you gave us, the kick in the butt you gave us about the mindset, the confidence, the desire, and all that? I had the best year ever. I reevaluated things, I went to school, I learned some stuff, and then I just went to work. Because at the end, action just means you roll up your sleeves. Even yesterday it was shitty. Even last week you didn't get a listing. And if you have no closings lined up, you still get up and you say, okay, what do I need to do today? How do I change it? How do I build different momentum? How do I change my mindset, change my beliefs, change my focus, change my desires, build better systems, and go for it? How helpful was this, my friends? Welcome to the Church of Borino. <laughs> Isaac has a good question. What does a good system look like for a newer agent? Great question, Isaac. Start with leads. Good system generates predictable, motivated leads. By leads, I mean somebody who wants to move, preferably sell, you want to focus on sellers, within the next six months. That's an ideal lead. 
Your job is to find people, what I refer to Isaac as high probability leads, high probability to find them, to convert them, to turn them into clients. Those are the systems I would start with. That's why I wrote two books just on that. Here they are. One will teach you how to do FISBOS, easy low-hanging fruit, because you can go on Zillow on our Craigslist and get a dozen leads right now, within minutes. I'll teach you what to do once you find them. Same thing with expireds. There'll be a buffet, as my man John Mosquillo said, of expired listings. So you start with that. You do one good open house every weekend and just knock it out of the park. You build a solid follow-up system, so once you start getting these leads, you start converting them into appointments. And the final step is converting appointments into listings. These are the systems you need to focus on. This is what I teach. Get good leads, follow up with them, get appointments with those leads, boom, done. Now, if you want more, if you want to come on board, I have this thing called the path. I can teach you all that, how to do that. You get all the systems, FISBO, referral, expired, online lead generation. We spend a year working together. You're start, going to start business, getting business right away. That's the goal. But we'll spend a year perfecting it, cleaning it up, making sure you're focused, you're on track, and it's all working. So do check it out. So that's what I recommend. Start with lead generation. If you're not getting at least one or two good leads every day, you're in trouble because you're going to need 10 to 12 leads on average. Now, of course, your numbers will be different, but somewhere between 10, 10 to 12 leads to get one appointment. And you're going to need two appointments to get one listing as a newer agent. I'm generalizing, obviously. But you get the idea, so you work it backwards. But you start with this, what do I want? Don't skip that. Don't jump to systems until these three are in place. Don't get ahead. Because this needs fuel. This is the fuel. It needs focus. This is the focus. And no system will work without confidence. You need some level of confidence, of trust in yourself, so you can communicate it to your clients. It would be like, think about it this way. Why is this important? You go to a dentist because you have a toothache. You sit in a chair, the doctor comes in, they put the face mask on, and they, his hands would be shaking as he says, oh, open your mouth. Wouldn't you freak out? Wouldn't you be nervous? Like, dude, shouldn't you be chill? Shouldn't you be confident? Like, you know what you're doing? Well, this is my first, first thing, first day. We're like, ah, uh, later. <laughs> right? You would be out of there like that. You need to have a certain level of confidence. We're like, don't worry, folks, I got this. I got this. I know how to do this. You can, you can trust me. You don't say that. That would be selling. That would trigger resistance. But through your behavior, your attitude, your inner state, you feel confident. And then through communication, both verbal and nonverbal, and again, wrote a book on it called, where is it? Here. Core Influence. You communicate it. And I'll teach you how to do that. Because that was my secret weapon. Because people judge you super quick. And if they sense insecurity, if they sense hesitation, if they sense fear, it's over, Johnny. Listings you've lost this year. You've lost because you were not considered the best choice. There was another agent who the seller considered better. Now, they may have different criteria, and sometimes you think, well, it's the commission. It's not. It's the price. It's not. It's the level of trust. They liked, trusted, and respected the other agent more. Let me put it in perspective, because right now your brain is going, bullshit, the other agent listed for 20000 more. Fair. You have Johnny Overpricer and Susie Honest. Johnny Overpricer and Susie Honest present to the seller. Susie Honest tells the seller 400000 That's what your house is going to sell for. Johnny Overpricer knows that if he tells a higher price, he's going to get the listing. So he says 500000 Seller, of course, will go with Johnny, but it's not because of the price. Because if the seller trusts Susie a lot more, believes that she is honest, she is upfront, she is the authority, she's telling the truth, and they don't like, trust, and respect Johnny Overpricer. They ain't never going to get the listing if they don't like him and trust him. You follow me? Only when both of you were considered equal, Johnny gets the listing. It's going to come down to like you, trust you, and respect you every single time. And when your brain is fighting, it's not fighting because I'm wrong. 
is because you try to justify it in your mind why you lost the listing in the first place. Because it's easier to say, well, Fakir got it because he called him a higher price. Nay, nay, nay. Fakir got it because he was better in building trust and connection. He may have been either incompetent or deceiving when it comes to price. Fair enough. Next coaching session, I will show you exactly why you should never ever overprice your listing, why you're doing a huge disservice not just to the seller but to yourself and your reputation, and you're damaging your self confidence. But why it's not even necessary. With the right system in place and the right approach, right communication, you don't have to do it ever again. Those are the systems, Isaac. That's what I would work on. How do you get leads? How do you generate business? That's your number one objective every day. If you don't get at least one good lead every day, you're out of business. You have a closed sign on the front of your store. Trouble. All right, my friends. Helpful so far? When is the next recession, Sergio? Why would you even worry about that? I wouldn't worry about it at all. If it happens, it happens. You simply react, adjust your systems, you keep going. Here's what I can tell you. <laughs> I started in real estate in uh, 1647. <laughs> I was in uh, Southern California in 1989. I started in 1989 in the place called Bellflower, California. Many of you might, might be familiar with it. Horrible time to get in real estate. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Everything was going we had interest rates, what, 14, 15% interest rates. We had to do wraparounds where the seller carried some of the financing just so we can close the deal. It was a nightmare. 40% of our inventory were foreclosures. I would do listing presentations where I would open the CMA and sellers would be crying their eyes out because the prices were so low and their expectations and their savings, their, their golden nest egg, gone, crushed. It was a terrible time. But I learned through fire. The reason I can teach you now is because it ain't ever got that bad ever again as it was in 89, 90, 91. It was terrible. You're competing, you have three listings on the block, two of them are foreclosures, they're priced 30% below yours. How do you explain it to the seller that the buyer will compare those two and that's a better deal and we're fucked. And once it sells and closes, that's gonna become our comp. It was a bad time. Are we headed for it? I hope not, but if it happens, here is what I can tell you. Even in the worst of times, there'll be people who need to buy, who need to sell, who need to move, who need a good competent agent. Here's the best news. In the worst times, more than ever, they're going to need you. And if you're competent, if you know your shit, if you know the market really well, if you know how to move properties in that kind of market, how to put deals together, you're going to be so valuable, you're going to be so in demand, you're going to have more business that you know what to do with. The bad news is, those that still think status quo, I'm going to kumbaya, do whatever I've done, Everything that up to this point worked, it's going to keep working again. Are sadly mistaken, they're going to get steamrolled so fast by cool, high status rockstar agents. That's my prediction. Now, it may be a challenging market, I'll give you that. It may be a different market, but there will always be a need for you. You ain't going to get replaced by no Zillow anytime soon. You have nothing to worry about. You are your worst enemy. You. Not the other agents. You. Drunken monkey in your head. Somebody actually said that. Who was that? Shante, what a surprise. Seated and listening. Good, good to have you. Sellers insist on going off the market for the winter because of the slowdown. They don't want to hear that it's better to stay on because of less competition. They would rather compete with everyone during summer. Advice. Joseph, great question. What do you do with sellers? You say, well, fuck it, we'll just wait. Here is the problem, problem, Joseph. What you're expecting me to give you is a magic line that would suddenly change their mind. That's impossible. See, here's the thing, Joseph. I would love for you and everybody else on the broadcast, we have a whole bunch of you on, to come and do the path with me. I think it's the best training out there. I think you're going to get best tools out there. I honestly 100% believe that there is no better training that will get you up to speed faster than me. I've done it for many, many years. I'm really good at it and I have all the tools and resources. But here's the thing. Almost nobody will take action. No matter what I tell you, no matter how many testimonials I show you, how many numbers I show you of agents taking three, four listings a week, you're still going to find an excuse why you won't do it. And it has nothing to do with me or my ability to persuade you. I'm not a big hard sell, sell guy anyway. It has to do everything with you. It's the same with your sellers. They either have the core drive and emotion or they don't. They either have a problem that will be solved by selling the house or they don't. See, if you have a seller who says, well, we can stay here another year, it's no problem. You don't have a seller. You have a prospect who may be interested sometime down the future. But you say, well, Barino, they were on the market, but it didn't sell. 
Why didn't it sell? Well, they wanted a little too much. Why did they want a little too much? Well, because they had a number in mind, and if we couldn't get that number, they don't want to sell. You don't have a seller. See, a motivated seller understands, with your help as a master communicator, confident, that the seller doesn't set the price. It's not up to the seller. Who sets the price? The buyer. And then the bank. So they can finance, okay, the loan. That's it. So if the buyer doesn't find that house attractive, doesn't find the price attractive, you ain't got a deal. Yes, the seller can reject, obviously, but it's going to be, the bottom line will be determined by the buyer how high and how much are they willing to spend. That's it. So if you tell me, well, my seller priced this, priced that, it's not up to the seller. The seller has only one choice to make. How bad do you want to move, Mr. Seller? How bad do you want that condo in Florida? How important is it for you to be there? Because if it's not that important, if it's cool for you to stay here, well, let's not waste each other's time. And those are the exact words I would tell the seller. Not to be rude or arrogant, but to be clear. I will do a specific session for you guys where I will teach you how with some communication strategies, some ninja approach, and some systems, you will connect with high status, as a high status agent, you will connect with high probability leads, motivated people. And you will very quickly, rather than wasting two, three months being on the market and then taking it off the market, put it back in the spring. See, if the seller takes these actions, what is very obvious through their behaviors, that moving is not that important. It's not that big of a deal. What you need is to adjust your marketing, number one, to generate high, probably better quality leads, qualify them better, establish your status better, establish your expertise better, probe better so you're very clear what the core driving emotion is, and help them get clear. That's the objective. And there are times if you miss it, you're going to go through the whole process. Tell me if this happened to you. It happened to me more, more than once. And I'm like, what the fuck? I get a listing. We get it signed. I put it on the market. I work my ass off. We get a great offer. I'm like, oh, this one is awesome. Tell the other agent, dude, this is a great offer. I'm, let's get this done. I call the sellers. I'm all excited. Oh, we got a great offer. I'm going to present it to you. Let's go over it. Let's get it signed. Let's move. I present the offer and I'm expecting like they're going to cry, embrace me, they're going to say, you're going to be our son, we're going to adopt you, you are awesome, you're going to inherit half of our properties when we're dead, we love you. That's what I'm expecting, right? Champagne popping. I present the offer, small gap between what the buyer wants and what the seller wants, and the seller goes, no. Are you fucking kidding me? Has it ever happened to you? Of course it, it happened to all of us. And you're like, I'm going to strangle you. What's wrong with you? Look at this. This is a fantastic offer. No. Their actions will tell you. So then the light bulb went, I'm like, shit, I, I screwed up the system. I need to help them get clear and I need to be very clear. Am I dealing with a motivated seller with a high core driving emotion? And they need to know and it's a process. Because if it takes me two months to go through the marketing effort to bring a good buyer, and then they get clarity, blah, a huge waste of time and frustration, right? You can relate to it. Almost every one of you right now is going, oh yeah, I had those. It's a process. But it starts at the beginning. Because I'd rather spend 15, 20 minutes having a chat with them, ask them a few simple questions. One of them I ask, well, what if the house doesn't sell? Could you guys stay here for another year? And I watch, not just the words, but I watch their body language, their reaction, where their eyes move, what is their energy, what is their posture, because they will tell me the whole story. And if they say something like, well, you know, they'll just stay, it's no big deal. Ooh, we have a red flag, we have a problem. Does that make sense? Now, why do agents still cling? Why do agents still hold on to it? Because they don't have systems that generate enough business where if one seller turns to be a, either non-motivated or a dick, an asshole, whatever, you simply say, thank you very much, pleasure meeting you, I can't help you. Have a wonderful day, good luck, I'm out. I don't have to hold on because I know I have two more appointments this week, what's the big deal? But if you have one appointment a month, and if it took you two months to get that one appointment, oh boy, you're in trouble. You're going to handle it differently. You're going to behave differently. You're going to feel differently. There'll be a lot more desperation, a lot more neediness, a lot more low status, very little confidence, different mindset, and your desire will be just get the fucking listing sign. I don't care if they want to overprice it by $200,000. I'm taking it. Are you with me? So you got to fix 
Desire mindset, confidence, and systems. And work with motivated sellers. I had a rule. If they didn't have a high driving, core driving emotion, if there was not enough motivation, and I was certain about it, I thanked them, politely left, done. And yes, I might follow up with them once in a while just to touch base to see if something changed. But if it didn't, don't bother. You're doing yourself and the clientele and our industry a terrible, huge disservice by overpricing properties. And we are planning a separate coaching system just on that, how to avoid overpriced listings, why you're damaging yourself, your mind, your business, and your relationship with the clients. How you're killing your opportunity to get more referrals, to establish yourself as the expert in the neighborhood, and how to avoid all that. How to be a rock star agent, serve clients, do well, get paid well without overpricing by a dime. The, the problem is not the sellers, the problem is you. Your approach, your system, your confidence, and your communication, and we'll fix that. All right, Borino El Fuego. So, Joseph, I hope that was helpful. Oh, congratulations, Raquel. I'm taking my state exam next week. I want to start the right way as a new agent. I'm soaking everything up. Perfect play. Oh, man. I wish I learned this stuff early on. I would not be homeless. <laughs> I sent this message to you earlier today. It may not be too long for this forum, but here it goes. I've been in the business for three years, and... I've been in the business for three years, but had to start and stop due to family obligation. I've been steadily prospecting since September. When I buckled down to get serious, but only have two listings, the market is slowing down, so homes aren't selling as fast as they were last year. I spend hours a day doing real estate, yet I'm not seeing any results. I'm making calls, texts, emails, mail out, newsletters, videos, need to be doing more of these, social media posts, and doing follow-up. I work expired, but not fizzballs. My broker does fizzballs, and I and I do expire so we don't trip over each other. I watched your video on seven strategies to get listings you made a few months ago and it's the process of implementing those. My family is hurting for money, Borino. My family feels I'm working 50 hour weeks for free and needs to take a different job. I'm not afraid to do the work and I hate to quit, but I feel like something is off. Something is off. Something is definitely off. Andrea, and I very much appreciate the honest words and it goes on and on, but you know what the real problem is? It's not your desire to work. You're taking plenty of action. You're talking to the right people. And yet you're not attracting business. You're operating on scarcity. You're operating on fear. Your focus, your mindset is still focused on there's not enough. The market is slowing down. I'm not making any money. I don't have any listings. That's the operating system that's playing the record in your head over and over. When I was a kid, I got this little record player. Some of you probably can remember. Remember a little plastic box with a little needle, and in the cover, you open up the cover, and those were the speakers. Anybody got those as a kid? Remember that? And one of the first records I got was Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. To this day, my favorite album. Any Summer Garfunkel out there, fans? When you're weary. No, don't worry. I want to torture you with my singing. And this was the first record I got. And my younger brother, he's four years younger, named Mario. One time I was playing the boxer. And as he came in, he jumped the table, the needle, and it scratched the record. And what happened? You know how it played? I am just a poor, I am just a poor, I am just a poor, I am just a poor. That's the record playing in your head. Poor, 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 poor. It is the lube, the mindset lube we get wrapped in that forces us to focus on how hard it is, how difficult it is, how challenging it is, how stressed you are, how we need to push harder, and how it's not working out. And I don't blame you because why? You look at the circumstances. You're collecting evidence. See, I told you, look, market is slowing down, fuck. See, people are not moving. Things are not selling. See, I told you. And then your husband tells you, see, I told you, you're working for free. You should get a regular job. And then your mother-in-law says that. And then your sister says that. And everybody starts chiming in. And then you start noticing other agents are complaining. Then you go on forums. You go on groups where people are crying how hard it's getting. And all this evidence and all this focus is feeding the massive amounts of energy. And then you're surprised that you get the same thing. I'm not here to blame. 
This is not about attacking or, or putting you down. or This is about telling you how the dynamic works. This is how it's set up. I had an email a couple days ago from a guy who says, dude, I'm living your story. I'm homeless. I'm like, dude, that's a reflection. And I know that now. And I wish somebody years ago would come and knock on my Cadillac DeVille, 1981, and say, hey, dude, wake up. Let me show you how this shit works. You're focused on the wrong things. You believe the wrong things. You're expecting the wrong things. The problem is in your head. The problem is not with the business. The problem is not with the economy or the, or, or the market. The problem is upstairs. And I didn't want to expect responsibility for that. Because it was so much easier to say, well, look at this fucking market. 40% foreclosures. Of course it's tough. Of course I'm broke. Justifying it. And then I slept in the car as a result, over and over. I am just a poor, I am just a, playing in the head. So where you are today, Andrea, is a result of your focus, your expectations, and your beliefs, your mindset, you had from about 90 days ago. And you say, well, I want nice things. I want to have business. I want to help clients. I want money. It is not what you think you want. It is the results that you're getting that demonstrates these are the true and core expectations and beliefs you carry around. Not the surface rah-rah positive shit. I'm going to put a pretty picture of a car next to my computer, which is what I did. Two months into it, where's my car? I don't have my car. It's not working. It's new age bullshit. Because deep inside, the operating system was still playing the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor. Poor me. Justifying and explaining. True or false? Now, I have a whole bunch of exercises. First month of PATH, my PATH students, we spent on deprogramming all this. I unfortunately won't have time to get into all that. So here's my promise to you guys. We will do, next Tuesday will be awesome. I'll bring those lovely ladies on. You can ask questions. I have some questions for them. How they run their business. What is their mindset? What is their daily routine? What works for them? The troubles that they overcome. How do they overcome it? It's going to be a great session. And I can't wait to talk to you guys. After that, we'll do two sessions. One will be about overpriced listings. And another one will get into the real depth of the mindset that I talk about almost every live session. Every time Coach Borino comes in on Tuesday, he <laughs> smacks your head, minds and minds and minds. But what does that really mean? And how can we get you unstuck? Because I promise you one thing. If you believe that the problem is systems, if you believe that the problem is outside, if you believe that it's a mechanical solution, you're already in trouble because the real problem, and again, I know this from the experience and I thought it so hard. And I was looking, well, if I just prospect harder, work long hours, if I just go door knock more, if I use this script instead, if I close them harder, things will get better. They didn't get better. And if you're stuck as well, if you're not where you want to be, start right here. What are you? I call them BEFA. BEFA stands for, and I'll put it right here next to mindset, beliefs, expectations, focus, and then as a result, actions. That's your governing force. That's what's guiding you through life. And we could spend the next five hours discussing just how it works. We don't have time for it. So let me give you some real quick fix before we get into the mindset. Now, if you can, come do the path with me. I will fix that for you. I, I won't fix it for you. I will show you tools. I will show you exercises and systems and things that worked for me that got me unstuck mentally first. There is a whole book about it. But number one, relieve the money pressure. Start there. Because there is nothing more stressful, tell me if I'm wrong, and then waking up at four in the morning going, our mortgage is due in five days. It's going to be $2,500 and I have $7 in my checking account. What the fuck am I going to do? And you can't sleep and you feel guilty. So fix that first. The way I fixed it, I had two jobs. I would do real estate during the day. I was a bartender at night. Terrible bartender. I have to admit I was horrible. I was horrible. I mean, I was a really good bartender minus mixing the drinks. I didn't know shit. So I had this little, I had like a guide, like a little book under the bar. And if somebody ordered like, th there were these two girls, no joke. They said, we want to have sex on the beach. I'm like, you want what? I'm working. <laughs> That's how bad I was. So I would have a little guide, you know, I would look up different drinks and half the time I would totally butcher it. But I figured this, if you just pour enough liquor and if you make it really stiff, they would forgive there was a shitty drink that the ratios of how many, um, cherries and how much syrup goes in it didn't matter. 
So for a few months, to, so that I could eat and pay for gas, I would bartend. Fix your money problems first. Real estate will be here. It's not a failure. It's not going anywhere. But get the money under control first. You, can, you will make a plan to come back. But get the money under control first. Because you need to eat, you need to pay the bills, and you need to stop worrying about it so much. Because if you keep feeding energy, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, there's not enough money, I'm struggling with money, money is hard to come by, which was my mantra, you're going to just repeat it over and over and over, and we're going to have the same conversation a year from now. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? What about all that stuff we talked about? What did you do? And I, I tried, I did, I prospect, I was still stuck. Up here. Number one, focus your money problems. Number two, start shifting your mindset. There are two books I want you to read. Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins and You're a Badass by Jen Sincero. Great books. They go in a lot of detail, a lot of tools, a lot of strategies, a lot of stuff that will help you get unstuck very quickly mentally. But first you got to admit the problem is up here. It's not out there. It has nothing to do with the market. It can be the worst real estate market in the history of real estate and there will be still people closing deals, making money, living a good life. Trust me on that. Once you have the money problem under control, once you have your mindset in place, then come back and I'll teach you some stuff. But we're going to be on this step once this step is done. These. Desire, mindset, confidence. The last thing I'm going to give you, and you're going to like this, because from your positive Tony Robbins of real estate coach Barino, it may sound kind of like a downer. I don't mean it as a downer. I mean to relieve the pressure that some, some of you put on yourself. And it's this. And I know this is going to sound odd from a real estate coach. Real estate is not for everybody. Real estate is not for everybody. Really ask yourself and be really honest, not just you, but everybody. Why are you in it? What really drives you to be the best real estate agent? And maybe you come to a conclusion where you know what? Fuck it, I'm just, I'm not cut out for it. I don't want to do this. And you're just collecting evidence to create enough misery to get out. See, I had a student, Jim, who came to me. This was eh, about four years ago. And he said, I'm struggling. I'm thinking about quitting real estate. I need your help. So we did the same routine I did with you, you know, fix the mindset. But I told him something. I said, Jim, it's okay to quit real estate. It's not for everybody. People change careers, they change their mind, it's fine. But here's what I'm offering you. Don't quit because you failed. Quit because you want to do something else. So let's make you first a rock star real estate agent because if you want to quit quick, quit on the success, on the high side, not the low, where you would look back and you know that was a failure. So we started working, we, we, uh, he got the expired system, listed nine expires I think in one month. Crushed it, made a lot of money. Came back six months later, says, okay, I got it. I'm making a lot of money. I don't want to do this anymore, but I got it. It's not for everybody. You don't need to beat yourself up or put so much pressure on yourself. If deep inside you still have the desire to serve people, to be successful, to be wealthy, to have access to the best deals out there, to know how to put them together, to create legacy for you, your family, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, it can be a phenomenal business. I can't think of a better business. That's why I teach this and not something else. And if you're ready, any of you guys, Andrea and whoever else, I'm here to help. Now, I don't do it for free. Obviously, you need to have a vested interest. You need to pitch in. That's why I charge for my coaching. But I do these free and trust me, you get more free stuff here. Some, some coaches would charge you a lot of money for this kind of stuff. I post videos, two, three videos on YouTube every week. So you got plenty to go on. But if you want to really step up, then come aboard. I'm ready for you. Helpful? All right. Carrie says, I am my worst enemy. Very true. Amen to that. Totally agree, Carrie. And she says, this is really speaking to me. Very helpful, says Raquel. Great. Love the video, says Keith. Hey, Mr. Keith. Nice to have you. You're the best. Thanks, Pamela. I appreciate that. Carrie says, very helpful. Mr. Glenn Twiddle is with us. <laughs> oh, my good man. 
Oh, good to have you. Mr. Glenn Twiddle is the number one real estate coach, in my opinion and many other opinions, down in Australia. We did a great session. Glenn, why don't we do one for rock stars? Would you like to do a little chat sometime, maybe in January? Would that be cool? I'll bring him on. Glenn has some great ideas, how to become a local celebrity, how to do it on a budget, how to do simple systems that can really reposition you from all the other salespeople chasing business and be the one that people come to. Awesome stuff. And a man who hangs out with Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a cool guy in my book. So if you're up for it, we'll set something up. I would love to have you here and we can do a little presentation. That'd be fun. Ashley, over 300 in my local market in December. Good. Mike says, what's crazy, it's been through the Borino systems, applied them, they worked, I got listings and then stopped doing lead generation, I can't get back on track. Many times frozen looking at the expired list and don't want to make that call. Mindset, mindset, mindset. Mike, exactly right. It's all about mindset. Now, if you do get stuck, here's a simple technique. Call one a day. Start with that. Start with that. When I started working out with my man George, and you know, I don't know how many of you saw George in the video. He's not a tall guy, but goddamn, he's built like a tank. That dude has arms. I'm like, dude, one day I want to look like you. And we're going towards, it's a slow going, but we're going. And we're crushing it. We're working out. But when we started, we started with these weights. You know, like you have the regular manly weights, the cool weights, and then you have the silver kind of fancy weights. I call them the Hollywood weights because they look good. You know, they're all like silver polish, metal looking. We started with those. I'm like, ew. But the reason we started easy is so we can build up momentum and I'm going to be discouraged. Because if I start too heavy and I struggle with like rep number four, then the next day I'm hurting, there's a very good chance I'm going to quit because I don't see the results yet. It's going to take some time and some repetition. So start easy. If you have a hard time jumping in, say, okay, I'm going to call one expired a day. That's my plan for this week. Can I accomplish that? Here's why that's important. In your mind, you set a target and you accomplish that target, you're someone who can trust yourself. You can trust yourself. You get that? You follow through. You accomplish it. Now you say, well, it's a sh small goal. Fine, start with that. And then double it. And then double it. Next thing you know, you can have two hours of very productive time calling expired, sending appointments. Because if you go in proving something and pushing, you're going to figure out a way to get out of it. Yes, you have to push time. There are times where discipline is necessary. You have to break through these comfort zones. But if it's such a challenge, start small and start building on that. That's going to serve you well. All right, Mike? Helpful? Isaac says, thank you. My pleasure, Isaac. Grace is right. Load CDE with the sellers. Yes. Karen says, this just happened to me. Seller rejected the offers. Multiple. What are I waiting for? They don't want to move. There is an emotional block, Karen. You got to figure out what it is. You know what, what worked for me with sellers like that? Especially if I missed something. You don't want them to dig their heels, fire you, hire another agent because they don't want to tell you the truth. Go to Starbucks, get one of those fancy carrying train, bring their favorite coffee, sit down with them and have just a pleasant heart to heart. Open conversation where you have no agenda, there's no pressure. See what so many agents, the reason they get so stuck is because they're so desperate trying to convince the seller they don't want to hear the truth. Right? So bring some Starbucks, sit down with them says, do you guys want to move? Or would you rather stay here? If you can have it any way you wanted to. If I had the magic wand from Harry Potter and I would go abracadabra, would you? Would you rather be here? Would you be in Florida? Would you rather move now? Would you move a year from now? What do you want? We can set it up any way you want. The only thing we don't control is the price. My magic wand is not that magical. <laughs> Dirty mind. <laughs> I know. But you understand? Have a nice open conversation where make them feel so comfortable they're not afraid to tell you the truth. Because if their actions are very consistent, stalling, not moving forward, that just means either there is no core driving emotion, there is no problem, they're attached to the house, they change their mind, there's something going on. You as an expert, as an expert communicator, and as their protector, as their guide, you need to find out what it is. And you need to build enough trust so they feel open to tell you. And be ready because they may say, no, we'd rather stay. Robert says, just this happened to me, 3,000 short of asking. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, Robert. Sit down with the sellers. Austin says, how does that work in a very small market? 150 listings in our entire MLS, agents taking listings, then coaching, proof reductions. How does that work? I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, agents take overpriced listings? Is that what you mean? 
I still believe that it's, 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 it's a bad service. Nobody wins. If the listing is overpriced, that's causing it not to sell, it's not a good solution. Now, the reason so many agents do it is because they don't have a system or the mindset to take good listings. So you'll be the first one. You're going to clean up. You still believe deep inside, well, I'm going to do what they do. I'll just overprice the fucker and then a month later I will tell the sellers who are too high. On the session I'm going to put together, you will see why that's a terrible thing. That's ruining your reputation, our industry as a whole, it's disservice to the client, it's not a good model. It's a deceiving used car salesman model, made from fear and desperation. And I'm very much against it and I'll show you a much easier, much better way. It doesn't matter what size of the market it is, none of that matters. David is another fan, Bridge Over Troubled Water, yeah, great album, man. We went to see Paul Simon, uh, he was in town, what about two months ago or so, forget, great tickets, it was amazing to see the legend few feet away singing all the greatest songs. The only thing I was hoping for, it didn't happen, but I was hoping like, you know, halfway through the concert, the curtain would open and Art would come out, Art Garfunkel, and they would sing a couple songs together. I never had a chance to see them together, but just to see Paul, to see him still singing the most beautiful music that I remember since I was a kid was amazing. It was awesome. All right. Is PATH a book program or get unstuck? But you know, Ali, PATH is my coaching program and we start with this book. You get that as a first part of the PATH. That is successful mindset money strategies that turn your real estate dreams into reality. And a lot of it deals with the drunken monkey, that little voice in your head. A lot of it deals with limited beliefs and these are things that I did because just like many of you, I was just as stuck, I had just as many fears, I had just as many insecurities about listings, money, clients and all that stuff. And I tried to fix it with hard work and discipline. That only got me so far. I need to change this to build this. And this is what the book is about. You get it when you join PATH, that's the only way to get it. If you're curious about it, just go to goborino.com, check it out. It's a month-to-month -month membership. I'll train you. I'll help you build all these systems. You get them one by one from us. We have live coaching. We have accountability. There's all kinds of things going on on the path. We'd love to have you. Go check it out. Valdemar, good session as always. I'm glad, Valdemar. Thank you. Really think about doing the path. Heather, come join it. Shanta would like to know when is the next boot camp class in DC. We are working on our schedule for, for 2019, Shanta. So stay tuned. Some good stuff is coming. Mike says, yes, thank you, good. Coaching set interval price reductions. I'm not sure what that means, but yes. <laughs> Coaching set, set interval price reduction. You can, but I'm, I oppose that. I don't believe that you sit down at a listing appointment and sell us, well, we'll try our price first. And then you say, okay, fine, we'll try your price first. And then if it doesn't sell in 30 days, we're going to reduce. I think that's a terrible service. That's a terrible advice. Think about it this way. You go, again, I'm going to use a doctor, God forbid, I want everybody to be super healthy and phenomenal next year. But as an example, you come to a doctor and says, unfortunately, you have a lump on your butt. <laughs> and we need to do a surgery. It's not no big deal. It's a short procedure. It takes about half an hour. We're going to cut it open, take it out. And you say, okay, but what I'd like to do first is take some aspirin. What would the doctor say? Why would you take aspirin? We could like cut it out, take it out, you'll be fine. And you would say, no, we're going to try it my way first. I want aspirin. Uh, doesn't work that way. And yet it works on real estate agents. So who's the authority in the dynamic? Who is the expert in that situation? Who has control? The seller or the expert advisor? <coughs> seller is in charge. Well, the seller says, well, fuck it, it's my property. I can sell it for whatever I want. But that's not the truth. And it is some agents who will perpetuate that notion. Now, I tell you where agents get stuck. Number one, they're not confident. They're afraid. Oh, if I lose the listing. Number two, they don't know the market well enough. So if they're not certain, see, here is my approach. I tell the seller, Mr. Seller, there is a price that will cause this property to sell. We're not here to discuss how much it's worth. It can be worth $2 million to you, and I very much appreciate it. I wear this necklace. It's very special. I got it from Tony Robbins. And if I lose it, somebody finds it. I'm willing to pay five, ten grand. doesn't matter. It's a very special thing. Now, if you just buy it, you can buy this probably online for a couple hundred bucks. So we're not talking about what it's worth. We're talking about what it's going to cause it to sell. 
If we price it at 420,000, that price will cause it to sell. It will sell for about 410, 415,000. You're gonna net about 300,000 after all the costs, commissions, and fees, paying off your mortgage. So the question here is, do you wanna sell? Do you wanna move? Not for how much? That is not up to you and that is not up to me. I wish it was. I wish I could get you more. If nothing else, my commission would be higher. But that, does, that doesn't work that way. It's going to come down to what is the most the buyer is willing to pay and what is the most the bank is willing to lend. It's as simple as that. So what I need to know is, would you rather stay or would you rather go? How bad do you want to be in the lovely condo in Florida? How important is it for you to spend Thanksgiving with your grandkids, to enjoy golfing? Or can you, are you okay with the scenario of staying here? There's nothing to try, there's nothing to test. Given the analysis we put together, it's pretty obvious that the price will be about 410 to 415,000. And even if some agents will quote you something else, we have access to the same information. There's, we can't change that. Now, why they're deceiving to you, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm honest. Would you rather hear the truth? What do you want to do? That's it. But see, what you're worried about is, what if you're wrong? What you're worried about is what if the other agent overprices it and it still sells? What you're worried about is what if the other agent takes it, keeps reducing it, and then sells it? And I'm telling you, there's a better way. And I will teach you. We'll do another session because we ran out of time. Yes, Austin, I get what you're saying. That's what I was referring to, that there are taking homes that are overpriced and then interval reductions. Bad idea. I think it's a bad idea and it's a disservice. Again, I will go into detail why. Why are you hurting yourself? Why are you hurting the seller? You're hurting your relationship with the seller and you're hurting the industry and your reputation. It's a terrible idea. I'm not a big fan of this. And I know we had an agent in my office. Her name was Lori. And Lori would take any listing at any price. The only condition Lori had was it was for one year. That's it. She didn't care about the price at all. She didn't care. She actually handed the contract to the seller, just put on the price you want. One year contract. And exactly like you said, she would just chip away. You guys are ready? Let's adjust the price, it's too high. Well, okay, next one. You guys are ready? Some of lawyers' listings would sell. Some of lawyers' listings didn't sell. The reason I know that is because me, as an expired expert, would pick up some of those overpriced listings that didn't sell. But Lori made enough money from those that did sell to have a very comfortable lifestyle. So I give you that, it is a viable model. And there are agents, and quite a few, who make a decent living doing that. My point is, there's a better way, where you will feel better, you will be honest with your clients, you will do it with integrity, you will clear more listings, you will get more referrals, you will have better reputation, make more money and sleep better. That's my whole point. Whichever way you decide to go is fine. This is what I believe. You should do right by your clients. And if it means not taking an overpriced listing, that's the right thing at times to do. Because one overpriced listing and one difficult seller, one seller who becomes the controlling factor, will cost you a whole bunch of good listings that now you don't have energy, time, or resources to get. And you push away because you shift your expectations. You start attracting people with money problems, demanding people, and controlling clients. And my point is there are plenty of nice, friendly, good people out there who would love to work with you who now don't have the opportunity because you have a different mindset, you have a different frame of mind, you have a different vibe out there that attracts a different client. So what you believe is that everybody in your area is something. And what I'm telling you is there's a whole bunch. There's a whole buffet. And I just don't focus on these people because they don't fit my ideal client parameters. Just like I don't attract every agent. Notice that I don't do 5,000 people arenas like some other coaches. That's not my thing. I work with very specific agents, hungry, high desire, willing to work on the mindset, willing to be coached, wants great results and doesn't want to fuck around, doesn't mind to roll up their sleeves and go to work. I don't teach a whole lot of this new age fluff stuff. I don't teach a whole lot of techie stuff. I don't believe, especially as a newer agent or agent on the budget, it's a good business model to spend five, six thousand dollars to in, and plug it into some complicated systems or advertising. That will come. That will come. But first, get these basic things in place that predictably generate you leads that don't cost you thousands and thousands of dollars every month. 
That's what I teach and that's the kind of people I attract. I'm telling you, you can do the same. You can attract motivated sellers, sellers who will follow your advice, who will price it right from the beginning, if presented well and if they put you through the system. Here is where agents get stuck. They don't have a system. And if you have low confidence and no system, you're fucked. Make sense? All right, my friends. So that's our session today. Thank you very much for being here today. I enjoyed doing this very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. My friends on YouTube, our friends on iTunes and everywhere else where you get this message. It's a pleasure to be here. If you want to check out more of my training, go to goborino.com. I'll be happy to talk to you. You can email us. Our email is info at borinoproductions.com. You can call us at 800-573-8492. Reach out, let us know, or just hit us here on Facebook. We'd love to talk to you. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know.